guys, welcome back to the Anime Collector. For today's tip, we're going to be talking about what makes a DVD rare, and in the case of shows that are released over the course of several volumes, what sort of patterns can we look at to try to decipher which volume is going to end up being the most rare and why. Now, what makes a DVD rare is when the supply of the DVD does not meet the demand of the consumer, meaning that more people want to buy the show than there are DVDs to sell. Um, so obviously this drives up the value of the DVD uh, and because there's not enough product to go around, the people who have the product get to charge a premium on the people who want to buy the product. Uh, another way to say that is if I was looking for a random obscure volume of some show uh, and I was looking on Amazon because I wanted to complete my collection and I only needed to get that one last DVD, I might find out that it's actually very expensive because the people who know that this DVD is rare um, are able to charge 10 to 15 times what they spent on it because they know that I'm not looking to just get some random obscure volume of some random obscure show. I'm actually looking to complete my collection. And because I'm looking to complete my collection, I might actually be willing to spend a couple hundred dollars to do that. Um, now, a very common misconception with, uh, with collecting is the idea that volume one or issue one of something is always going to be the most rare because it's technically the oldest. Um, the idea that, let's say that you bought uh, the first issue of a comic book series that started being printed uh, 20 years ago. Um, and then let's say that the show, or the, the series, the comic series, ended uh, 10 years ago. Um, so you would think that Volume 1, which has had an extra 10 years on it, must be rarer than the final issue. Um, and, and the idea that, uh, you know, if you think about it, Volume 1 or Issue 1 has had 20 years of people buying it and selling it back to each other and, you know, buying it used. And uh, the, the, the comic eventually gets ripped and torn and damaged and destroyed to the point where there's definitely a lot less of them uh, on the planet than there were when it, when it was first started printing 20 years ago. Um, so you're thinking about it is they, they've basically had 20 years to dwindle down the number uh, of, of copies that are still uh, floating around. Um, and obviously you look at uh, the final issue which came out 10 years later and that issue's only had 10 years of dwindling over, over that time. So you'd think that if you had, let's say, mint condition copy of Spider-Man uh, issue 1, that you would be able to sell that and maybe buy a car or pay off your student loans or something. But actually, more often than not, issue one ends up being worth less today than it was 20 years ago when it was first released. And a lot of people are confused by that, but I actually don't think it's that confusing because I've been collecting for a long time, and I find that volume one of DVDs usually ends up being one of the easiest volumes to get. Now, I have uh, discovered a pattern that seems to be very, very consistent with shows in that if there is going to be a really rare volume, one that's going to be really hard to get, that's really expensive, it's always going to be the second to last DVD. Um, so, in the case of Eureka 7, this is 12 volumes long. So, in this case, volume 11 was the rarest. In Aura Battler Dunvine, which is also 12 volumes long, again, volume 11 was the rarest. In Bacano, which is only four volumes long, volume three was the rarest, and, and so on and so forth. So, now, um, in the case of Eureka 7 and Aura Battler Dunbine, um, I also found that the final volume, volume 12, ended up being the second rarest, the second most expensive. So, to give you guys kind of a mindset, an idea of what, what I'm talking about, when I got volume 11 of Eureka 7, it was worth uh, about $80. Uh, maybe, maybe even a bit more, maybe up to $120. Uh, I don't really recall. And, and volume 12 was worth um, like uh, 50 to $60. Um, and Aura Battler Dunbine volume 11 at the moment is worth $250. And, and volume 12 is worth $150. Um, and then when I was picking up Bacano, um, I remembered, uh, like I knew that volume 3, the, the second to last volume in this series, was quite rare, quite difficult to get. It was probably around $80 to $100 and I didn't really want to spend that money at the time. Now, I actually got really lucky in that I found it, like, a long time after the show had actually been released. I found it at Fry's for only $16.99. Um, so, needless to say, I definitely picked it up there. Um, but why isn't Volume 1 the rarest? Why is it seeming to be the, the last volumes? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I want to try to give you guys a scenario. So, um, imagine that... Well, actually, first of all, another sub-tip, something that I don't really want to waste an entire video talking about, is that uh, DVDs are always released on Tuesdays, uh, because that's how the shipments sort of work from, from the trucks and stuff driving on the road, delivering all the, all the DVDs. They, so they always are released on Tuesdays. So let's say that um, 
I'm not really in, into anime, but uh, my friends are really into it, or my girlfriend's really into it. And I thought, well, I guess I'm going to start trying to pick it up, see if it's any good, you know. And I go to Best Buy, and let's say that it's the, the first day that uh, Bacano has been released. Let's say that Volume 1 just came out that day. So I go into Best Buy, and I go to the anime section, and I'm taking a look, and I'm like, wow, they got a lot of copies of this show. Oh, this looks pretty cool. I want to I wanna check this out. Oh, wow, it's about the Mafia? Oh, I, I really like Mafia movies. I think I'm going to pick this up. And then, of course, Best Buy just made a sale because I decided to buy it, you know? And uh, not only that, but there's a lot of copies there, which means that if somebody else comes in that same day, whether they're, they're there to get Bacano or not, they'll look at it and they'll actually see the other copies of it and, and potentially go through that same, that same thought process of, should I get this? Let's take a look at it, you know? Um, so obviously, uh, and you guys got to understand that, that I know things have changed. Um, now people watch anime on Netflix and Hulu and, um, and Crunchyroll, so it's a lot easier to sort of advertise what other shows exist because they're right there in front of your face. But back in the day, like when Aura Battler Dunbine came out many years ago, um, ADV wasn't putting out commercials on, on cable TV that said, Aura Battler Dunbine, Volume 1, contains such and such episodes, out now, get it today. You know, they weren't doing that. That, that wasn't something that they did. So, um, you know, because it was sort of a, a niche market that they were trying to get people who were actually into anime. So in order, again, in order to promote it, they need to have a really flashy, big amount of them at, at stores and whatnot. Now, likewise, let's say a month and a half or so later, uh, Bacano Volume 2 comes out. And now let's say that I'm, I'm a different person. I'm somebody who's into anime, um, but I, I don't go out shopping a lot. Maybe I'm, I'm, I typically watch fan subs or something, but occasionally I will support the industry and I'll actually buy something, um, but only if it really catches my eye. So let's say that I'm out and about, and the reason I'm even near a DVD store is because I'm at the mall with my girlfriend or somebody, and she decides that you know she's got to go shopping all day, so I'm bored out of my skull. So I just wander into the DVD store, and I look at the anime section just to see if anything catches my eye. And I'm looking around, and I see this, and I'm like, oh, wow, this looks pretty cool. I wonder what this is about. Oh, cool, this sounds really cool. Oh, no, it's Volume 2. Shoot, I don't want to start this on Episode 5. Oh, cool, they do have Volume 1. Awesome. So now I can actually buy this, you know, and then there you go. So, um, obviously, they're going to want to have Volume 1, they're going to want to have a lot of copies of it made and ready for you to actually get it. So that as you're buying things, you'll see Volume 2, and, and you'll actually go back and try to get Volume 1 and all that. And uh, because a lot of people are not going to pick up a show if they can't start it from the beginning. That's just simple fact. Now, um, obviously, uh, like I told you before, I got this at Fry's and I ended up getting a pretty good deal on it. Now, um, in a different occasion, I was talking to somebody who worked at Fry's and they told me that um, the way that businesses sort of work is that um, they, they have like this opportunity where uh, like basically they buy the inventory from, from Funimation. Funimation sells it to them and then they put it on their shelves and they sell it for a higher price uh, in order to make a profit. Uh, and then they actually have a certain number of days like or, or months or whatever where if a DVD is not selling well, they can actually sell it back to Funimation uh, in order to clear up some shelf space so that they can put a different show um, that might be a bit newer and might have a more appeal to to people who, who it might you know it might be a more hot ticket item and Best Buy might make a lot more money that way. Um, so um, the guy at Fry's told me that you know even though that's really how it works uh, at Fry's they don't do that they actually hold on to the item and they just keep marking down the price until somebody eventually buys it uh, and that's how I was able to get this. Now keep in mind with with this newfound knowledge that I've shared with you that that's how these things work. Um, imagine that Best Buy just sent back. Um, two million copies of volume one. I, I'm just grabbing a random number. I don't know how much you could actually expect it to be. Might be more, might be less, but let's just say that Funimation just got back two million copies of Bacano volume one. And they're like, okay, well, we just got back two million copies, so um, we should probably stop production of volume one. You know, this is ready to go out of print because now we have two million copies in our warehouse that we're gonna have to figure out what to do with. So um, then let's say that they're looking at uh, the sales that they've had over the years or over the months or whatever, and, uh, and they've decided, okay, based on these sales, we should probably slow down production of volume two. Uh, and we should decide that, that because, um, because volume one didn't end up doing so well, um, potentially, that volume two is not going to end up doing so well either. So we should slow down uh, how much we're printing of it and just sort of... Um, to sort of you know print more later if we need to, and then that way um, volume two they, they kind of cut down the number, and then of course that that also goes into volume three 
and then in turn also volume four. Um, so that's why there's a lot of copies of volume one, but not so many copies of volume four. And another thing that goes into that is let's say that I pick up volume one and I, and I decide to get it and I watch it, but I actually really hate the show because it's way too violent for me or something. And it really makes me feel kind of sick to watch that kind of stuff. So then I decide I'm not going to get volumes two, three, and four. So in that case, somebody bought volume one, but they didn't buy two, three, and four. Okay, now let's say that another person bought volume one and kind of liked it. So they bought volume two, but then when they watched volume two, it didn't end up going in the direction they sort of expected it to. And they ended up not liking it as much as they thought they would. Uh, and then they decide, you know what, it was a good show, but it's not my favorite. So I'm going to stop collecting at volume two. I'm not going to buy volumes three and four. And instead, I'm going to put my money towards a show that I know I really like. And I'm going to keep collecting that show instead of wasting my money on a show that I might not like as much. Um, so obviously Funimation, and you know, I'm just using Funimation as an example. This is true for all companies. Um, they look at, at their stuff and they're like, yes, clearly we are going to sell more copies of Volume 1 than we are of copy, copies of Volume 4, right? But that sort of explains why, why these end up being like copies of, of Volume 1 end up not being that rare even many years after it's been released. But why isn't Volume 4 the rarest uh, DVD instead of Volume 3? Well, um, I, I should mention, like if I didn't already mention this, that uh, I don't actually know the reasoning behind this. This is my hypothesis that I'm sharing with you. Um, but I do know that the pattern is incredibly consistent. And here's my theory as to why Volume 4 is often less rare than Volume 3. I think that what they do is it's sort of psychological. See, I think that, let's say that um, Funimation knows that when they release... Uh, DVD 1, DVD 2, and DVD 3, that some people aren't going to pick up the show uh, because they're like, some shows are, you know, 600 episodes long and they're like, I don't know if I want to get started on that, right? And then when they release volume 4 and it's the final volume, I think that they print more copies of the final volume to try to get people to notice that, yes, this is the final volume. And that means that the whole show's out and maybe I should start looking for it. Like, or people will see, oh, cool, so Bacano's finally out. I'm going to pick up volume four and I'll go look for three, two, and one, you know? And I think that that's actually what's happening is that they're actually printing more of the final volume than they are of the second to last volume uh, in order to try to um, jumpstart their sales again, in order to get people excited about the fact that the show's ended so they don't have to worry about looking for... Um, constantly looking for, okay, now when's volume five and volume six and volume seven going to come out? And I think that's the reason why this is end, ending up happening this way. Why volume three in this case is really rare and volume four is not rare and neither is one and two. Now, uh, like I said, this is, that's my hypothesis, but, but this pattern is incredibly consistent. And I actually looked through everything that I've ever bought in, before doing this video and I tried to find all the shows that I remembered having a hard time getting a certain volume of. And uh, I actually thought at first that this is something that's very common, but there's no way that it's true. There's no way that this is 100% accurate. Well, literally every show that I went through, and I'm just going to grab another one for example, because um, this is uh, not, four, not four volumes, it's not 12 volumes. This is Zipong. It's actually out of print. It was released by Genion. Um, volume 6, the second to last volume, really, really hard to get. Um, the rest of them pretty easy, you know, and uh, uh, I that's just one more example. But, you know, there's a lot of shows that I look through. I'm like, I remember having a hard time getting this, but it turns out, in fact, um, uh, Street Fighter 2V, it took me forever to get volume three, you know, um, out of four. And it's just it just it seems to be incredibly consistent. I'm, I'm constantly thinking of more and more shows that I had a hard time getting. And then it ends up that uh, it, it, the volume I had a hard time getting was the second to last volume. Now, I did run into one show where my particular experience with it ended up with the volume I had a hard time getting was not the second to last volume. And that happened with the movies of Urusa Yatsura. Now, um, this actually is a very unique case, though, <clears throat> because Anime Ego released all the... Uh, they licensed everything for Urusa Yatsura, except they weren't able to get the second movie, which was released by U.S. Manga Corps. Now, when they made this art box, they left an open slot in it so that you could actually put the second movie in there, which was very kind of them. And they also looked at the design scheme of, of the one from U.S. Manga Corp, and they based their design scheme off of it so it wouldn't look out of place in your collection, which is really, again, very cool that they did that. 
Now, um, because I was buying the art box uh, for the movies, and because this was around the time when Urusa Yatsura, um, where, where, where Anime Ego had mentioned that they were um, going to stop printing Urusa Yatsura, um, I, w I didn't really bat an eye at the fact that I had to spend uh, over $100 to get the, the five movies um, without the sixth one um, and the art box. So, um, but then I ended up having a really hard time finding uh, movie number two. And uh, I eventually found it at a really obscure anime shop. They had it um, they had it new, believe it or not, for like 20 bucks, and they just hadn't sold it. They've had it for their, there for a very long time. And um, I bought it, and then now my collection's complete. And that was my memory of, of this endeavor, of trying to find that rarest volume. But the truth is that I overlooked the fact that because I had to spend a lot of money, I just assumed it's because it was out of print, uh, and because it was um, because it was out of print, and because I was buying the complete set without volume two, you know, without movie two. But it turns out that movie five is actually like hundred and twenty dollars by itself. So the reason that I spent over a hundred dollars was to compensate for the fact that I was also getting movie five in the art box. And what that means is that the pattern, even when I thought it didn't fit one hundred percent of the time, in every experience I think I've had, it's always been the case that the second to last volume is the hardest one to obtain. Okay, now here's the thing. Um, I recently looked and, and I wanted to get some, some numbers to share with you guys. Uh, so I looked up the current price of Bacano Volume 3, which at the time when I was collecting it, um, cost like, you know, 70 to $80 or, or, or more. And uh, I looked it up and it cost $7 on Amazon now. And I'm like, wow, that's really weird. Somebody's probably selling a used version that's completely missing uh, everything but just the disc, or maybe the disc is snapped in half and they're just trying to sell it for cheap or something. Um, but I looked it up and it seems like they're, that's pretty consistent, that that's what it's worth now. Uh, and likewise, when I looked up uh, Rekka 7, uh, Volume 11 is still quite rare, but Volume 12 is not very rare at all anymore. It's actually very cheap. Uh, and I was like, why is that? You know, and I really thought about it. And here's, the, here's my theory behind why that is. Um, so, in recent years, um, Eureka 7 uh, recently got a, a box set release like this, like with what Gundam used to do. Um, and I think, like you guys remember, I mentioned that, uh, that when a DVD becomes rare, it's because the supply of the DVD does not meet the demand of the consumer. And if this chunk of consumer here says, I really want to get volumes 11 and 12 of Eureka 7, because uh, I've got volumes 1 through 10 and I just want to have this whole show, but it's really expensive and I'm unwilling to pay the price yet, this, this chunk of people might say, well, um, they just released a box set, so goodbye, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I don't, there's no more demand coming from me, I'm going to go and get the box set, you know? Um, and then uh, that's going to that's gonna take the price that, that the, the show used to be worth and it's going gonna, it's gonna to lower it because the, um, the supply is getting closer to the demand. Um, and in the case of Bacano, this one makes a lot of sense actually, why Volume 3 is only $7 now, because when I was trying to get this show, it was uh, a long time after the show had actually been completely released, but they hadn't released any box sets yet. And, it, I'm, and I stopped like thinking about how expensive and how much it was worth once I got it. So. Um, I assume what happened is when they released the first box set, a very similar thing happened, where, where here's the supply of, of the Bacano Volume 3, and here's the people who want Bacano Volume 3, and then they said, oh, cool, a box set, gone, you know, I'm going to go get the box set. And then now the supply is here, and the, uh, the demand is here. And then uh, at this point, um, the, the Save Collection box set comes out, and uh, they go, okay, yeah, we're just going to go and get that, because it's super cheap, and we're tired of waiting to, to finish off this show, right? And then eventually the Blu-ray came out, and people are like, uh, people are looking at it like, well, this is four DVDs, this takes up a lot of room, the Blu-ray all fits like on one disc, I'd rather have that, uh, and I'd want to get the Blu-ray anyway because it's, um, it's a lot clearer, it's a lot better quality. So then this, this section here, and a lot of these people are going to say, I have all four volumes, I don't realize that they're actually rare, but I have all four volumes, and I'm going to go ahead and sell my, my four volumes, including volume three, um, and that way I can just go out and get the Blu-ray and I don't have to worry about having the DVD in my collection anymore. And then what that does is when they sell those Volume 3s, that's more supply. And then obviously when they leave, because they're just going to go get the Blu-ray, 
that's why the, the it shifts and it goes from uh, from being ridiculously ridiculously expensive to ridiculously cheap. Um, so I think that's what's going on, and, and that's actually really. <clears throat> Pardon me, that's actually really good news for me because it means that uh, a lot of stuff that I might be interested in collecting is probably now going to cost a lot less money, uh, which is great uh, for me at least because I'm not really looking uh, to get Blu-rays at the moment. I don't even have a Blu-ray player to be honest with you. Um, so uh, that's the tip I wanted to share with you guys today. And, and kind of the idea that I want you to take away with this is if you've ever seen a show that you really wanted to get at like a used DVD store, but you didn't want to get the later volumes because you're like, I don't want to get volumes 11 and 12 because I don't know if I'll ever be able to get volume 1 because surely it's the rarest. Well, I'm telling you right now that it's probably not the rarest. And if you can actually get the second to last volume, it might be a good idea to get it just because you'll probably be able to go home and buy the rest of the show on Amazon for pretty cheap. Uh, so that's my tip for you guys this week. Um, now, if you guys want to support me, you can do so by leaving a like, you know, sharing this video with your friends. Give me a comment. Let me know what kind of things you want to see on the show, what sort of things you'd like to see me review. Um, and that's about it today. So let's take this rare DVD and pop it on the shelf. And if you guys want to check out my review from this week of Last Samurai, here's a link to it. And uh, I'll see you guys next week for another tip and another review. Take it easy.